Hey guys, so today we're talking about fingerprints. So by the time we're done, you should be able to answer the three main types of fingerprints. What are they? Uh, and then we can break those three types down further into specific kinds of fingerprints. So I want you to be able to identify different kinds of prints by the time we're done with this little section. So first off, what's fingerprint? Fingerprints are an impression of the ridges on your fingertips. These ridges on your skin basically leave impressions or marks on things as you touch them. Everybody's fingerprints are different. Uh, fingerprints are the same for your whole life. As you get older, they just get a little bit bigger. Uh, even identical twins have different fingerprints. And fingerprints have general patterns that allow them to get classified and studied. So, oh, there it goes. All fingerprints can be classified into three categories. And those categories are, move me over there, are arches, loops, and whorls. So we're going to talk about all three. First, we're going to talk about arches. This is an arch specifically. Uh, notice that the ridges enter on one side and leave on the other side. So we'll turn on my pen here. So you can see that it's coming in and then going out. That's an arch style uh, fingerprint. Approximately 6% of people have this kind of fingerprint, so not very common. Um, this particular one is a plain arch because it's just like a little hill. just comes in and goes out. This is a tented arch. So tented arches, again, they come in on one side and leave on the other side. But notice you've got this spike in the center of ridges, this little spine that forms in the center of the pattern. So that's what, why it's called a tented arch. Uh, then we've got different kinds of loops, so move me up there. Uh, in this case, it's not going to, there it goes. Ridges enter on one side and leave on the same side in a loop. Approximately 60% of people have loops, so they're very common. Uh, the top image is a left loop because notice that the lines come in on the left, loop around, and then exit on the left. So that makes it a left loop. If the lines come in on the right, like this guy here, and then go out, also on the right, that would make it a right loop. So top image is a left loop, bottom image is right loop. Make sure you're labeling these in your notebook as we're going through the notes so that when you come back, you can actually identify, oh right, that's a right loop, without having to read through all the notes again. So, there are also central pocket loops. So, ridges enter on one side and exit on the other side. So, notice you've got this ridge, and if I follow this line of ridges all the way up and over, it comes in and goes out on one side. The trick with a central pocket loop is that uh, they don't lean to one side or the other, but they do touch each other. So notice these lines here are actually connected to this line, which is connected to that line. So it is kind of a spiral, but notice there's a point at which the lines break or go in other directions, and the lines will cross over each other. So there's lots of lines that touch each other in a central pocket loop where right and left loops lean one direction or the other, the central pocket loop doesn't lean. It's centralized. So uh, then we have double loops. Double loops are pretty, they're more rare than the other two kinds. Uh, whoops, I'm drawing on there by accident. There we go. Yes, erase everything. So um, the double loops, uh, ridges enter on one side and exit on the other. And if you follow it, sometimes it looks like they double back. That one ends. But this one here continues 
and actually forms over here. So it kind of forms this weird S shape in the middle. And that's how you can see a double loop, is it forms that S shape in the middle. Not to be confused with an accidental whirl, which we're going to get to here in a second. So whirls. This is a standard whirl. And ridges are circles. And notice the circles are concentric. That means they're evenly spaced, and they don't touch each other. They're actual circles. They're not like the spirals we saw in the central pocket loop. They actually come all the way around. They don't really touch the other lines. They just form these circles that get bigger and bigger and bigger as they go out. Uh, approximately 34% of people will have whorls, so they are the second most common kind of fingerprint. So just look for those lines to not cross over each other, and then you'll know that you have a whorl and not a central pocket loop. So accidental whorls. Accidental whorls can be a little confusing if you see them sideways. Uh, the ridges enter, there are two sets of circles basically that sort of blend together in the middle. And so what you get is this weird mushroomy shape. So let's see here, I'll follow, eh, we'll start with this guy right here. So if I follow this line around, notice it comes up and it goes back and it folds over on itself and then it just kind of dies right there. It forms this weird mushroom shape. So that's how you tell an accidental whirl is that it forms that mushroom shape top to bottom as opposed to the S shape of the double loop. So three main types of fingerprints. Whoops. Three main types of fingerprints are arches, loops, and whirls. What can we break those down into? Well, there's left loops, right loops, central pocket loops, and double loops. And then there are central whirls and accidental whirls. And there are tented arches and plain arches. So you should be able to identify all of those. Make sure they're written into your notebook. And now we're going to look at some ridge details. So uh, when we examine fingerprints under a magnifying glass or with a microscope, we're looking for very, very small details to match. Not only is this a loop, but then to be able to say, oh, not only is it a loop, but it's a loop that has this weird core in part of it, which matches up exactly with the location of the core on so-and-so's fingerprints. That's how we can use fingerprints as identity evidence. So we can identify the different kinds of ridge details here. So you've got core, ending ridges, short ridges, which just start and end, uh, forks or bifurcations, where you're going from one thing into two right? So it's splitting. Then you've got deltas where two things flow into one, which is like the delta of a river. Uh, you've got hooks. They stick off the original line and just sort of stop there like a coat hook. An eye, it looks like an eye. You've got dots, which are just a dot inside of the print somewhere. Sometimes they're called islands. You've got crossovers, where lines actually cross each other. Bridges, where two ridges are actually connected with a longer line. They don't cross, but they have a connection. Enclosures usually have a dot inside the eye, or they'll have a short ridge inside the eye, making them look like this. Or sometimes you can have funky specialty um, details like a uh, question mark, or something that looks like a smiley face. There's no fancy name for those. They're just called specialty ridge details because they're unique to that individual person. So what I want you to do is take a look at this and see how many different kinds of ridge details you can get. It would be great if you come up with five. So you would mark it. For example, this here is a short ridge. So I might mark it and then over here, draw a line over here, and then I would label it short ridge, right? Which 
is hard to do with a mouse. Short ridge. I D G. Whoops. E. There you go. So I labeled it with my mouse badly, but you get the idea. You have the same picture in your uh, notes, and you should be able to find five at least different of the ridge details and circle them, label them, make sure you know what they are and where they are.